and gentlemen, welcome back once again to yet another of our almost regular weekly episodes. Uh, this week we're going to be talking to um, the Mountain Moz guy, Ben Rising, and we're going to get into a little bit of his history and in the case modding world and find out what's going on. But we also have another special guest with us too. But before we get to him, let's talk to Bill. How you doing, dude? I'm doing great, everybody. Um, we officially started the Mark V tank from World War I for DICE, and it's going to be an intense project. I'm going to have a video on my YouTube channel, an introduction to the project. It's probably going to be the biggest build I've ever done in my 48 years on planet Earth. There's over a thousand pieces in the construction of this thing. Um, but enough about me. Today, we've got a hangout that Drew and I have been trying to get together for a long time. These are two guys that made a serious impact in this hobby. Um, just, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm, I really am. Uh, we've got Gary Mullins, the creator of Pimp Rig and PC Apex, and Ben Rising, the owner of Mountain Mods. Talk about some history in this room right now, Drew. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, two of the uh, the biggest names I remember as far as when I first started in, it was at Pembroke, of course, and everyone always talked about wanting something from Mountain Mods, either a case or a, one of the peripherals or the, the hard drive cages, just any of the dozens of little things that he would put out with so much quality to it. It, it was fantastic. Absolutely, and we had uh, we tried to get Gary in a previous hangout, but he couldn't make it. Um, so we spent about one of our longest hangouts, over an hour and a half, I think, talking with Vern, aka Twisted, from Pimp Rig, about the history. But we have got Gary here today to actually get the real story about how he started Pimp Rig. Gary, what's up, man? Good to see you. What's up? <laughs> so how, how did started? you start it, man? Um, actually, at the time, I was working for Comcast doing um, advanced tech support stuff, and I saw these other sites that were doing hardware reviews, uh, like Tom's Hardware, and et cetera, and I was like, I could do that. The, the testing they're doing, I could reproduce that. That's, that's not a problem. You just got to use a scientific method as you go through, take notes, and know uh, a little bit of English <laughs> and be able to write it up. Um, I did that a little bit just to get free parts, honestly. I was like, no, I <laughs> just to get free parts? <laughs> I, cannot, I cannot afford this video card, this case, this stuff, but I know I could tell people about it. Um, so I was like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to throw up a site and just start doing some reviews. I bought some stuff myself to seed uh, the site and get some reviews going. And then just little by little, I uh, got some sponsors that jumped on board uh, and just kind of snowballed from there until... Uh, Wix's caffeine machine. Oh hit slash, yeah, that hit slash dot and took down my shared hosting provider within about thirty minutes. Um, and the other what hundred other sites that were hosted on the box with it, so they had to cut me off. And within two days, I had a dedicated server that I threw up um, because demand was so high, uh, and it just kind of just kept going. Within about four months, I. Uh, Started working solo. Wow, man. And I remember when I, you know, Pimp Rig was the very first forum that I joined ever. And I remember I discovered it. And the, I, I actually watched that hour and a half um, episode that you were talking about. And it, I, I was like, wow, that, I didn't know we were the first forum that you signed up on. Uh, yeah, that made me, made me smile big time. Um, that's one of the things that, like, kept me going and I would always be bragging to my wife and say, man, look at what these guys are doing. Yeah. It feels great that I brought them together and that they're learning from one another. And it was just it's such an organic thing, the way it all came together and just uh, the site kind of formed itself, honestly. I just tried to make sure um, everything stayed between the lines and nothing got kind of crazy. Yeah, Drew and I talked about this is that your programming though, you had a real um, intuition about the type of features and things on a community forum that a lot, of, a lot of the other forums didn't have that were really cool features like the rating system in the gallery and like how you could set up your profile page. Everything on your forum was unique. I've never seen it before. It was like for customizers, it was cool because they could kind of tweak their own profile to kind of give that their own custom look. 
Yeah, that's what I'm into. I'm into I customize everything. Uh, it, nothing survives without being modded, basically, if it's tech oriented in my house. Um, to this day, even if it's not a PC, a tablet, I'll take them apart and etch the glass on the backside. Um, just something like that. I'm always tweaking stuff. So I knew other people would want to do that in the site because that's what I would want to do. So I just built the kind of site I would want to be a part of. Mm -hmm. Okay, so and what happened to, like, what triggered the change to PC Apex? What's your side of the story on that? Um, I, I think what's funny is during the, during the last video that you did that I was able to make to, uh, I think one of the people said something about the word pimp was in a, a title, and they tried to send the link or send some info, and it didn't make it through because uh, the filter caught it. Well, that's exactly why. Um, there was, our mailing list had got to a point where we had about eight to fifteen. It started eight and ended up ending up around fifteen thousand uh, people on our mailing list. And I had stats for how many were getting bounced and, and not even being delivered. And uh, it it was kind of a a big letdown when I, I knew I had this great story I was or a product that we were reviewing. I was trying to send out news. And then I would just see this huge list of of uh, rejections just because. Oh was, yeah was triggering those spam flags. Yeah, yeah, it's true, man. I've had people, they said that uh, yeah. at work. Well, I worked for a corporation. I worked for the Toro company, the Lamore company. I could not look at pimp rig at work. <laughs> yeah, see, that's, I, I wanted to get around that. It was, it sucks. I, I liked, I liked the very um, casual feel of the site and the name. And I liked how mm -hmm. it was very, uh, you know, slang driven, just, you know. Yeah. It, it wasn't it wasn't too stuffy, um, but at the same time, the name was I was I just kept thinking maybe we can keep the feel, but just mm -hmm. change the part that's causing us the pain. Yeah, um, yeah. Now some people didn't like it. <laughs> we've got Ben Rising here, Mountain Mods, and Gary. You actually had Ben create one of his UFO cubes for you, a custom one that was like way over the top, right? What's the story on that, guys? It was awesome. Um, from what I remember, uh, he had a certain selection of, of the Mountain Mods cubes up there, but there was uh, just a few little tweaks that I wanted done because I knew the hardware that was going to go in it, and I knew kind of the specs that needed to be there, the, the, um, the fans, mounts, and all that. Uh, and then he was more than willing. He was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I will do that. Cool. Well, we're going to actually get the history. I'll oh, check this out. He's showing. Uh, yeah, there, there's the rig we, we did for yep. Gary. In his, in yeah, his yeah. book. PC, you can still get that on Amazon, can't you? I think so. Yeah, it's PC Chop Shop on Amazon, gang. Go check it out. Um, but, uh, Ben, I want to hear the story and how you got into making these ridiculous over the top computer cubes that were unlike anything else. When they, when they, like the first one I saw online, it was like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, well, it was a long time ago. Uh, do it, did the, uh, really the first, the first foray into it was, uh, I spent time building one from hand, but it wasn't, wasn't exactly the U2 UFO, it was similar. And I put it up on uh, a few forums. Um, it, may have, uh, it may have been before Pimp Rig, but I, I think that it, I put it up on a couple forums and there was a gentleman from New York that wanted me to make a duplicate. And I'm like, well, geez, that took, uh, that took me about a couple hundred hours to do it by hand. So I, I started by uh, designing the first uh, U2 UFO in AutoCAD and uh, did a small production run, one of which, you know, he, he obviously paid for. And that's uh, kind of how Mountain Mod started. Guy from New York that uh, saw one of these over the top cubes. I had one side that was uh, water cooling and the other side that uh, was just the PC components. So it was really just uh, somebody needing a need for more space. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They wanted to get into water cooling. And back in 2000, it was probably around 2000, late 2001, 2002, that I did this one by hand. Um, and uh, there wasn't really anything else out on the market that 
did anything similar to it. So you had you had people doing the, the closest you would get is there was a yi, yi on yang cube. Yeah, that's right. That. Yeah. There was a lot of people do, doing modifications on that. Uh, but it took a lot of work. Um, so I wanted to design something that was uh, more open and uh, allowed people to do something similar or even more um, without having to, to cut up as much. And that's where the, the U2 UFO came into play. What about like what type of equipment when you did the first one, you were just using what shop equipment you had at the time. But what have you like what has been the, the generations of shop equipment you've had to like invest into to answer the demand for making these? Well, generally, most of these, these are made on the um, Kumada laser machines and uh, and punch presses. Well, most of our parts are made on those kind of have been since day one as far as the as far as the fabrication is concerned with the exception of the one I built by hand. Um, so th there hasn't been a whole lot of change in that venue other than, you know, uh, the purchase of a, a laser uh, that, that was for acrylic, a laser cutting machine for acrylic. Uh, prior to that purchase, all the acrylic we had to drill out by hand uh, for clearance holes on the rivets. And what we were doing, we were finding about uh, breaking, at first we were breaking about 50% of all the windows <laughs> by drilling out clearance holes and they would crack in the corners. Um, so the laser machine drastically uh, reduced our cost by just not having to buy as much acrylic to get a good product. Um, so that, that's probably the biggest uh, machine purchase was the acrylic laser machine, which was around, at the time, probably a $12,000 investment. Do you also use a bending brake in your shop too? Yes, a bending brake is used for all the flanges and mm -hmm. whatnot. Now, if I'm not mistaken, uh, years ago, the very first time I saw a Mountain Mods Cube in person, I think it was 2000, maybe 2003 or four. Um, am I mistaken, but were, like, were you welding the cases too? Were they being brazed or welded together? Yes, the first evolution of the UFO uh, was not what we call hypermodular. Um, the first UFOs were basically comprised of uh, two pieces, the one being the bottom frame, and it was all one piece. You had a bottom, front, and back that were a U-shape, and then you would have the struts that would attach from front to back, and they were seam welded, uh, where they attached from the front of the case to the back of the case. And I, I'm pretty certain that's what Gary had in, in his pimp rig. Um, I think it was around 2007 that we, we started making them hypermodular. Before that, we also started making uh, what was called the modular, which was all the panels removable. The first ones were a, a C clamshell that actually went over the top of the case and you'd have to kind of pull it out and slide it down over the uh, sides of the case. So there's been a lot of evolutions to the UFO and the case, ascension, pinnacles and whatnot. Were you, uh, before you uh, started making cases, what, were you like into like fabricating stuff, like customizing cars or where, where's your roots, your background come from in this? Well, really, uh, my background is more into uh, network engineering is what I was doing at the time that I started Mountain Mods. Um, my first modification goes back to way before the internet, and it was a completely functional modification. Uh, back when I was around 12 years old, I ran a bulletin board system, which is pre-internet internet. internet. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I needed to cool the, the uh, it was a Color Computer 2, Radio Shack Color Computer 2. <laughs> <laughs> In 1981, they came out. But it would, uh, during the summer, it would overheat and the board would just die. So uh -huh. I uh, cut out a couple holes on the top of the, of the uh, chassis and mounted a couple fans in it. And that kept it going all summer long. And that, that was really the first modification I ever did. Um, but as far as the uh, getting into the nitty gritty of the cosmetic, the aesthetic, oh, there was a day walker, the aesthetics of uh, cases and whatnot, it was, 
uh, when I was working as a network engineer for a large grocery store firm out here on the West Coast, it was just something I did on a, as a hobby. Um, you know, I was I was a forum member and looked at all the forums and um, started doing a uh, system build that was I was using Peltier coolers and I needed a case that would separate the two chambers and mm -hmm. that was the first hand uh, unit I did um, and that really got me into it and I also polished it it took probably oh. yeah hand <laughs> polishing you know what that's like yes <laughs> uh, hours and hours of hand polishing using different grades of uh, uh, um, sandpaper I, you know I've learned you know when you learn lessons it's like no next time I'm going to a plate or a professional so I, don't, I can just pick it up when it's done <laughs> yeah either that or just a chrome powder coat is even yeah. really nice <laughs> yeah absolutely now another thing is is that Ben you're just not making these cubes you're also making towers as well yeah towers were uh, they've been out for quite a while um, but that was kind of uh, you know we stayed away from towers at first and and the reason was well there was so many towers out there yeah uh, how, how could you possibly compete with towers but as the design of the ufo went um more modular it made actually more sense because we could use with our hyper modular design we can use a lot of the same parts for different cases like the struts for example on that monocle that is showing are 18 inches and they can be used on a ascension case or or uh or the uo2 ufo case and all the a lot of the parts are interchangeable just like even that side panel can fit on the side of a u2 ufo that's so very clever going with hyper modular allowed us to really cost effectively expand our uh options yeah that's whenever uh, i th i always think of um volkswagen for example they use the same uh platform but it's for all their like the sedan the hatchback the wagon it's just smart engineering and right. resourceful. Um, look at this behemoth. What's what's yeah. the story on this one? Well, that is a uh, extended ascension. That's our biggest uh, design that we have, and that's obviously a horizon back panel. And he looks like he's using a 720 quad front panel that allows a, seven, uh, a quad radiator on the front and a, and a two triples. And then underneath it is using the pedestal, uh, that'd be a pedestal 24. Um, for uh, Obviously, there's probably some more water cooling radiators down there in that chamber. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look at the stacked. He's got uh, like three fans stacked. I don't know about that. But. <laughs> I, yeah, I think what you're seeing there is, I think what he's got is a single fan, but he's using maybe other fan casings uh really? for huh. for shroud effect because there was a there was a time when everyone was using some sort of shroud mm. you know to minimize yeah. the turbulence in the air yeah. noise from the airflow have you seen uh, this one before uh, you know i've probably seen it but i haven't really stared at it for a long period of time mm. you know that's that's kind of a cool thing is there's thousands of builds out there on the internet yeah <laughs> People enter mountain mods into Google Images. <laughs> now this one, this I remember this guy when he built it because he bought some of my stuff for it. Uh huh. And uh, at the time, I had uh, a site called CaseModBlog.com, and I did a feature on it. And it's just you know it's so over the top, crazy. He's got multiple five and a quarter bay units. I mean, overkill for fan controls and and uh, it was just. But it was a conversation piece. I remember when. Uh, I shared this. I had gotten a lot of hits on that post. <laughs> yeah, I think he got a custom uh, front panel there too, if if I re recall correctly. Some oversized fan holes on the front there. Dude, what I was doing is I was. Um, he bought those grills for me, and obviously they look like speaker grills because <laughs> yeah. they are yeah. speaker <laughs> grills. <laughs> but they worked, um, and. I don't know, I'd done a mod with one once and I thought, you know what, there may be people that may want to use this in mods. And so I contacted a, uh, uh, a professional audio manufacturer and was selling these for a while. Yeah. Um, but, but what I've learned too, um, and Ben, and maybe you can validate this, uh, I brought it up in the past, is that you know, when we first got into this hobby, people were more willing to get power tools and get in there and start cutting up stuff, where today it's really... 
it's the stuff that's just easy bolt on. You just needs a screwdriver that really sells. You know, people just aren't willing to take the time as much as they were, you know, 12 years ago. Right. Yeah. I think there's some truth in that. A lot of it is you just have, you have those options available that, well, back in, in the beginning, there really wasn't an option. You had to take a vanilla case and cut it up. And now you have cases that are completely uh, ready to go or suit your needs um, from the get-go. Was this also one? I wasn't sure because this looked different from any of your retail. No, that, that is uh, one of our cases. That's an H2GO case, uh, one of our smaller form factors. Even, even though it's small, it can still fit a EATX motherboard in there. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, I, I love this one. You know, do you know who did? Do you remember who did this one? Maybe not. Not specifically. Uh, her name was. Sh she went by Shaza. Shaza on uh, Extreme. She did that System. one. Yeah, it was her first. I, I thought she did the uh, anodized black one. She took some incredible pictures of an anodized one. I think she did more than one build. She may have. Yeah, she was awesome. You know. Um, Interesting woman. Uh, unfortunately, she kind of disappeared from the scene a few years ago, and she was really cool, though. Um, they, right. be, they made her a, a moderator, moderator at Extreme Systems, but that's also when the whole um, debacle over uh, RR Tech forums and all that went down, all that drama. And I think right. she just got tired of it, of yeah. policing everybody. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of policing occurring at that time, for sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And rightly so. Yeah. Now, how about this one? Okay. Uh, that looks like uh, it was probably one that we did for Tech Power Up by the looks of it. Uh, a review unit that uh, we did for them. If not, it's somebody else is doing a very similar build there with uh, what appears to be a crystal ship version of the Ascension. And that's acrylic front plate, uh, the acrylic top and sides as well, quarter inch thick. Mm -hmm. uh, looks smoked gray. Mm -hmm. uh, cast acrylic. Yes. Amen. Cast acrylic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the horrors of extruded or plexiglass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a nice build. I like how he did the front fans, of course. Uh, he's going to probably run into a dust issue. Uh, it, uh, looks cool. Yeah, I see. He had a custom back panel. Mm -hmm. uh, that was made for two power supplies there up above the motherboard and also to fit that um, quad 140 radiator on the back panel and on the top panel there. Really, the space is just, it's so tight on the Ascension to get that in there. There's a little bit of pressure from those quad 140 radiators as you put down the lid of the mm -hmm. case. You have to kind of bolt it, bolt it down, but there's a little bit of, you, you probably can see a little protrusion if you looked at the acrylic at the right angle. But there was uh, quite a few of those uh, quad 140 builds that were purchased from us. Have you ever seen this one? Uh, this one was from BitTech. It was featured on BitTech. Really? Mm -hmm. Haven't seen that one. That's pretty cool. Was it long ago, I would imagine? Oh, man, probably six or seven years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is another shot of Shaza's or Shaza's build. Um, earlier, uh, you mentioned, whoops, sorry, gang. We can go back to this later. Um, oh, I want to share something I've got too, Ben, a little surprise that you'll remember. Is, uh, remember this article? Well, of course, yeah. I remember that uh, article. Dude, <laughs> I think you and I. Right <laughs> <laughs> I think the reason why we kept this, everybody watching, um, um, this is the deal. Maximum PC would have an annual thing called the Dream Machine Build, and it was where if um, you had an unlimited amount of money to build the cutting-edge gaming system like the latest greatest hardware that was available at the moment and you had just unlimited resources to put this this build together uh maximum pc would do a write-up on it and in 2010 they chose ben's was that was, which ufo was that that's the u2 ufo the okay. uh, yeah that's the main, uh, the main one here's the thing gang um 
when you if, if this was this was a, a um, uh, huge <laughs> yeah huge it, deal. It, yeah this is like the equivalent of um, getting on the Wheaties box for the triathlon <laughs> this is the equivalent of when Bruce Jenner announced that he wanted to be a woman this is the equivalent <laughs> of when Droog discovered Iron Maiden for the first time and he was staring <laughs> at Eddie's picture wondering what what is this and this is before he even played the record. He was just like, this just looks so evil and good. Um, that's, this was huge, man. Okay, after that article came out, they, and they actually they used some of my grills from MMPC Tech, our billet grills on this. Trust me, I know this. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny because Ben and I have never talked before, and this was like something that connected us together in the market. Um, they chose to use my grills on this build, and I shit you not, uh, 12 months later, we were still getting sales of these grills just because of this article. 12 months later. I know it was 12 months later, probably even further out than that, but I recall it was like, holy shit, people are still asking about those. Um, so I can only imagine, Ben, that you you definitely benefited from it too. Oh, yeah. I sent hundreds, hundreds, maybe maybe even thousands of callers your way because they were asking do you do you, do you sell these grills i'm like well, no. I didn't mean that <laughs> no it's all good i mean yeah that was a that was something that was really uh great for business for sure yeah and as far as i know ben maximum pc no wait i'll take that back the only other time they use an independent case manufacturer was case labs that they did i think maybe two or three years ago, they had made the Dream Machine build cover. Um, otherwise, before that, it was Silverstone, Leon Lee, Cooler Master. Lots of Cooler maybe, Masters, yeah. Yeah, whatever was like the f most expensive full tower on the market would, would get that. Um, and it was just so cool to finally let it be, hey, the Made in USA guys for once are featured, you know? Well, yeah, it took the uh, UFO seven years. You know, it was a, that's a seven year old product that made the dream machine. So, that's good. You know, yeah. and you know who I credit it was, it was really Gordon, wasn't it? It was Gordon that was behind that article. I think Gordon. so. To a large yeah. Degree. And, um, unfortunately, you know, as you guys know, the uh, publishing industry is dying slow, slowly. Um, maximum PC was sold to, uh, uh, a publisher in the UK. Uh, this year and um, unfortunately from what I could see is that when they transferred all the content of Maximum PC's original site the vlog and everything they didn't bring all the content over to the new site that was owned by this uh, English publisher and so like all these articles all the uh, the blog entries all that stuff is gone they didn't transfer any of it over and I'm just like baffled why why would you do that? It's just, so funny. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> I mean, I mean, there was, I remember when I discovered, I went immediately went to Maximum PC's Facebook fan page, and I'm sure the post is still up there. Like, what the hell's going on, guys? I was going to refer to something with somebody, and I knew that you'd done an article on it, and it's gone. Why would you just not transfer that? So, it's so important, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and really, what does it really cost to keep hosting that information? You know, you know, so, um, but that's kind of, it's kind of a segue of Gary. You know, we've been bothering Gary. We want to have access to the files from Pimp Rig so we can host them. <laughs> Gary. I can make that happen. I actually have all the original stuff. And Every it's just, a, it. it's just a matter of like, what, what steps do we need to take to work together so we could create, um, uh, a sub URL Droog or something on through the Mazu, like the Mazu.com pimp rig or what? Whichever way you want to set it up that way, or I still own the pimp rig.com domains as well. Oh, you do? Uh, yeah, oh, that's good. Droog, you're, you're muted, man. Yeah, yeah, I realized that. Um, <laughs> what we do is, you know, using the pimp rig URL, we could do a redirect over to whatever subdomain we set it up under. So it would still act like pimp rig. And no matter that way, no matter what we typed in, 
you know, pimprig.com, it would always go to that site. Would it like it would make the most sense now? I, this isn't really my realm of expertise. Would it make the most sense to like set up Gary with like uh, uh, a, an FTP address and he can just upload everything to a directory in there? Kind however, of yeah, however Kyle wants to handle it. Okay. You know, that's funny because Kyle was just messaging me. Hmm. Kyle. All right. Kyle is the. Uh, uh, Forum owner for the Modzu. He he's the one that set up the Modzu site and and the forum. Um, he's got he's got the, Kyle, not, I think. <laughs> no, yeah, he's he's got the admin keys for the Modzu. So uh, and and we've definitely got finally um, after years of struggling of getting the right hosting plan uh, because Drew, tell him the story about when we shared the caffeine machine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I managed to get. Um, Oh geez, I'm going to lose my mind now. The uh, Wix's caffeine machine from Pimprig from uh, Web Archive, uh, yeah, webarchive.org. Well, I'm I, God. I spent what weeks rebuilding that. Um, yes, I'm trying to. The name of the site that tagged us, dude, just completely went out of my oh, head. Oh, uh, it's some geeky oriented. Um, it was thinkgeek.com. I don't know who shared it out to him, but somehow when we posted it up and we shared it out to Facebook and Twitter, they got a hold of one of our feeds and they linked right back to us and shut us down within a matter of hours. And so it was pretty much just like the slash dot effect. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Um, it's old content is what's so funny. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah that that's true. They but... locked on the classic look of it. And, you know, it, it, it I think that's what drew everyone in was it was obvious that this was something from back in the day and it was so clean. It was very purpose built and it, the way he wrote up the article, I mean, that right there, it was its own narrative and it, it was beautiful to see that many people coming back into it again. Yeah. We had some great writers at, uh, at Pembroke and PC Apex. That's, I mean, that's, that's why I owe most of, of the success of the site to, to be honest. Um, I just encouraged the guys to write in um, verbiage that was casual and like they were talking to a friend of theirs. Feel free to throw some jokes in. Um, I'm not looking to be too politically correct. You know, I would just tell them have fun with it. Uh, that that's the main thing. Uh, you don't want to make it too sterile and too um, stuffy and people lose interest. You know, it's it's got to be fun, funny. Um, interesting, unique. Uh, I was I was looking for that, and these guys delivered in spades. Like it, it's like they were writing machines, writing machines. Dark yes. Sam, especially he daily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were doing um, do-it-yourself tutorials and articles that nobody else was doing at the time as well, um, which really helped uh, drive interest. And um, what's what we noticed is you know after. Um, Barry Snyder had started the uh, the Facebook group. Or wait, I'm sorry, I, I don't recall who started the Facebook group for Pimprig, but we've noticed like people are resurfacing up that mm -hmm. are just like recalling those days, or maybe they they've started a new project for their kid or something. They're like, man, I really wonder uh, where all those Pimprig people are now. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it's, Gary, uh, it's nostalgia for sure. Gary, do you sometimes miss not having this site? Oh, absolutely. Um, it would have it would have never been taken down if I mean, honestly, it was the when it sank in, all the uh, the advertising revenue dried up, and oh, yeah. that's why I depended on. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you had a good run, though, man. Yeah, yeah, it was a good uh, about eleven year run. Yeah, yeah, I, I loved um, every bit of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, what I found here is the uh, uh, a few hangouts back we had Darth Beavis on the hangout and he had mentioned this build that he had had uh, Ben do for a show and it was called Daywalker. Um, and what I'll do is I'll I'll screen share that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Daywalker. This is and and now that we've got Ben here, we can actually get the story behind this because it was was it kind of controversial because it was a cross or something? What was the deal? 
Well, I don't know if that caused it to be controversial or not. Um, but I remember Rich, Rich was bummed out because he was interviewed by somebody and he forgot to mention your credit behind the build and he regretted that. Right. Yeah, he, he did. And, uh, you know, I was a little up, upset about it. I think he thought I was more angry than I was. But, uh, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a big project, a lot of time and a lot of funds that went into it. So I was expecting a certain level of return from, uh, you know, name exposure. So, yeah, he was on interview with, uh, I think, a pretty substantial television uh, production. And uh, he rattled off every, <laughs> all of his uh, uh, support other than Mountain Mods. And, you know, to his, his credit, he, he just said he forgot. So that's, that's the story behind, uh, you know, I think he's, he was uh, considering dropping out from modification. That's right. I'm glad that he didn't because, right. you know, he's a very talented individual. And uh, more, than, more than talent, I think he's got a lot of ambition, which I think Ooh, that yes. is really key in this industry. You've got to have more ambition than normal. Yes, to really make, I, make I agree. I agree. And uh, yeah, he was sincerely sorry about that. And uh, he uh, definitely, um, he still, he still has you in high regard, man. So hopefully <laughs> yeah, it, it wasn't the last that. thing that we did together either. So, I mean, we did a, a few other smaller projects after that, mostly just some laser cutting parts here and there for his acrylic stuff. But, you know, he's, he's talented and I like being a part of uh, his, his work. So, you know, I know he's uh, doing the vanilla ice thing recently and mm -hmm. seen, seen some of his uh, work that he's done there. It's pretty cool to get that kind of exposure. Last time I talked to him, it sounded like he's getting into uh, cosplay now. He was okay. uh, creating um, stormtrooper helmets, and I think him and his wife are getting ready for an event. Um, but when I watched this video, it brought back memories. You know, do you know the story on the Reservoir cover? Was that by chance Tribal Overkill that created that that Reservoir? Uh, reservoir for the Daywalker. Yeah, um, it probably was. I, I, I'm not certain who actually did that. I think that, that sounds familiar. Yeah. And that was everybody that's watching this. This was this shroud was all created by hand. There's this guy that hit the scene and it was about this time. His name was tribal overkill. You right. Un unfortunately, Google is not I mean, you, you, when you don't save your stuff on a good host, it disappears over time. But um, tribal overkill was just ridiculously talented at fabricating stuff. Oh, crazy. I remember that. Like, man, each tiny little piece was like this big write-up and so much detail into it. I, that, yes, that was, yes. That, that's one of the builds that stand out to me for sure. He, when he appeared, he was a rock star in just like the, I want to use the word maniacal, but it was definitely like way over the top, really into um, making this stuff. And as tedious as it was, and he would spend just long hours working on this stuff. And he caught the attention of AC Ryan at the time. And they had some type of um, program where they wanted to bring in popular modders to design new products for them. And um, I think, and I don't know his real name was but i think he got taken advantage of by ac ryan and he wasn't getting paid and he had gotten um from what i recall he had gotten like a workspace but of course that requires a rent and he was dealing with ac ryan not paying him and this is this is hearsay what i've heard um and he just got you know uh jaded by the whole thing and disappeared um, I hope he's still alive somewhere, and I'd love to find him someday because the guy was just – even like he would do pencil sketches of stuff he wanted to do, and it was amazing. He was really an artist, but um, I had forgotten about him until I'd saw this, seen this build, and I'll have to ask Rich um, for details on it just to confirm because it looks yeah. like – He would know. He would know. Rich would know. In fact, I think I've seen him in the chat there, so – Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the chat. Yeah, I imagine. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole thing is too, Ben. This is funny. Is that, and I, I think I brought this up with somebody. Is um, 
at that era when we were doing custom mods, the whole realistic fire with skulls and all this, you know, evil stuff. It's like, it's so funny how passe that is now, <laughs> you know, because <Yeah. laughs> I did my fair share of flame cases too and skull stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's still more of that, but you know, that was uh, for a specific theme that he was doing, you know, Daywalker theme. So but, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, that was a custom, custom paint job. Do you Obviously. do you know? Oh, he had one of his friends, probably. Um, uh, I can't right. remember. It was uh, down in uh, Medford. That's yeah, the guy with the name. Ah, I know that guy somewhere. Yeah, he's he's done he's done a few others as well uh, builds. Yeah, yeah, he's done custom paint for the modders, especially if they want um, airbrush artwork done. Right. He's Steve, really good at that. Steve Nunez, right? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Steve Nunez. Yeah. Uh, Steve Nunez is especially talented at uh, airbrushing portraits of people. Um, so, yeah. Okay, Ben, I, I was going to pull up your website so we could uh, kind of like do a tour here. Anybody that's watching that hasn't been to mountainmods.com, bring it up on your PC or whatever so um, you can check out Ben's site this is where it all happens and what we also need to mention is that ben's not just making cases he's making stuff for diyers like motherboard trays uh fan adapters all kinds of adapters for like your own scratch builds and and i think that was really smart ben you got to diversify your stuff so you're not just focusing on one product right yeah we have a lot of uh a lot of different parts and uh they they sell quite well there's still a good market for the D diy what's the story on this ben slay thing oh, that's a bob slay oh bob slay <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh the story on the bob slay that's a that's an acrylic case that specific one was uh, using mirrored acrylic which uh maybe back at that time was kind of a cool thing there was a few other people that were doing some mirrored acrylic type stuff Mm -hmm. um, and one of the nice things about the mirrored acrylic on that it was that it had a back masking that you, uh, when you etched it, would the light was capable oh, of shining yeah. through. So that's backlit right there. That was kind of a nice effect. Um, but yeah, that's one of the first Bob the Bob Slay version one uh, out of mirrored acrylic. Why Bob Slay? Was that somebody a friend or, or something? Or? Uh, no, it's uh, it was just kind of shaped like a bobsled so oh, and then the, the feet on it have uh kind of like a rail type thing in that oh okay and, and the sleigh type thing uh, people were starting to to uh in the gaming community start talking about slaying at that time <laughs> oh, i get so it <laughs> now now uh sleigh is more of a, a common slang word you know but used for various purposes but <laughs> um and you you've taken advantage of uh, you know catering to the whole uh, Bitcoin mining market too. Is that still a major part of your sales? Or well, not not so much as Bitcoin mining, but variations of uh, cryptocurrencies. I mean, Bitcoin mining is really only doable by what's called an ASIC machine, which has a single purpose, which is to crunch numbers specifically for SHA two fifty six encryption. Uh, but like we, we have uh, a few options for people in the cryptocurrency world or any other people that need um, utilization of a lot of video cards um, that could be rendering. Or uh, like a, uh, I mentioned, the medical industry, maybe for folding proteins. Mm. We've had some sales for uh, this. What you're staring at there is um, the gold digger version of a, of a U2 UFO. That utilizes uh, what we, we call a 20 PCI bracket on the back of the case there um, that allows you to mount multiple video cards up to seven, I believe, uh, with a space in between. And then it also has uh, the ability to put 120 fans behind the mm, video cards. I like that. To help eliminate the air from the chassis. And it does a wonderful job. Because uh, when, you're, when you're mining or rendering, your video cards are at 100% usage and they put off tremendous amount of heat mm -hmm. oh yeah so it's noisy too 
yeah, the cryptocurrency market that's utilizing this isn't uh, mining Bitcoin with GPUs. They're mining altcoins. Um, mm -hmm. But but there is definitely a use for it. And there's, you know, they, they want bottom dollar because it's all about ROI and not not about anything aesthetic with them. But This is where we're getting into an area. Um, it's under uh, uh, parts under computer cases category. Um, this is the stuff where uh, Ben's shop has been a godsend to DIYers out there because one of the most sophisticated things to fab yourself is uh, the IO panel, um, unless you can cannibalize one from a case, but Ben's offering you brand new ones with different finishes. So if you're doing a scratch build from like wood, acrylic or whatever, um, and you need this, component you can get it from mountainmods.com yep it makes uh makes a uh, your do it yourself case building a lot easier to have those io brackets for sure they're pretty much impossible to make without a handbrake of some sort yeah and just taking the time you know you've taken all the time to do that um and at 29.99 for this for example i mean come on i mean you know, versus uh, at least 29 hours <laughs> fabricating just to look to look like that without a laser cutter. Right. Huh. Good luck. <laughs> you know, um, is uh, where do I find your motherboard plates? Are, are they in this section too? Your motherboard? Um, yeah, motherboard parts. Oh, here they are. The okay. Subcategory. Yeah, this is this is my favorite uh, Mountain Mods product. Is uh, because you could actually take this and you can make your own tech bench with this, uh, the DIY tech bench, and you can use this as the core right here for mounting your motherboard and your video cards. Um, again, saving you a lot of time if you're doing fabrication. So yeah, we, we offer obviously variations of that. That's the 10 PCI XL ATX. We we also have HPTX and ATX versions if you're looking for something smaller. But obviously, HPTX is as large as it gets. And it, all of the, the trays are reverse compliant. Mm -hmm. Do you offer, like if somebody needs some like laser etching done or custom parts made, do you offer that service? Of course, yep. We do a lot of, uh, we've done a lot of laser etching in the past. Uh, we still do, but uh, the custom, the customization of parts is probably a good 25% of our business. Um, so we'll get a large order uh, or large number of like, people wanting just a custom front panel mm -hmm. or a custom back panel. They, they just want their one-off thing. And we do offer that, you know, it comes at a bit of a price. That's, that's a custom case from a long time ago. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. I think that was one of, one of our first custom cases, probably within the first 25 or so. Um, and that's a anodized unit. The guy wanted a custom uh, display in the center and, Look at the number of LEDs he had in there for uh, RAID array. You can yeah. see hard drives behind it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. RAID prawn for sure. And, and he, well, he, yeah, he was in the video editing and uh, mm. wanted just a one-off for himself. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that um, uh, you want to mention to anybody watching in regards like uh, what your future plans are for Mountain Mods? Any new stuff around the corner or... Just anything well, you want to tell people watching? Uh, new stuff is always going to be coming around. Um, most of the stuff that we'll probably be releasing here in the short term will be just variants of existing platforms, you know, uh, alternate back panels and front panels and such for existing cases. Um, a little more options on acrylic cases. We just released acrylic tower. It's reverse GPU. Um, and we'll be doing some more of those acrylic variants in the smaller form factors, which is something we, we haven't really gotten a, a lot into smaller form factors. Um, so that is something we're going to be doing here. Oh, that's good. Yeah, of course, as the market, yeah, it gets smaller and smaller for sure. Right. Um, I have not, admittedly, guys, I've not checked the uh, our chat room. I've just been having fun here. And uh, Darth Beavis Rich is in there. Smooth screaming? Creations. There it is. Yeah. Smooth oh, Creations yeah, yeah. did the painting. Oh, yeah. They did the paint. Yeah. I remember those guys. Well, they, you know, here's the thing about Smooth Creations. Um, I told this to Gordon years ago. I said, you know, 
I know you guys are using smooth creations for your dream machines, <laughs> your paint job. And I said, you know what? You got to give somebody else a chance. And I know that they're right there. or You've got a relationship with stuff. But, you know, every year when it's them, there's, there's people that are equally as good or better that deserve some exposure. And he took that to heart, too. He's like, you know what? You're right. Um, I don't know what they did the following year, but um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, I mean, you laugh because, yeah, we, it was constantly smooth creations, smooth creations. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it was Tribe Overkill. He mentioned uh, for the Reservoir. Um, he also mentioned he has Skull Tramp stamps. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they, Rich? Are they around? <laughs> your, are they around your waist? <laughs> oh, funny! Yeah, G yeah. Jim Sailing. Yeah, he was the owner of Smooth Creations. And you know, and Jim, from what I understand, Jim Jim had a regular auto body paint shop, and that's why he branched out into the computer case stuff. He was already, you know, his his main bread and butter was doing cars and motorcycles. You know, so that's why he had all the resources in place. Um, but uh, yeah, cool. Um, all right. Hey, Gary, is there anything you want to uh, leave for us before we uh, end today? Leave? Uh, you can be looking for those files very soon from the old um, the old site. Uh, if they're if you're running the Bulletin as your forum right now, it would actually be possible just to import the entire um, build work log forum. Nice. And all that old content in. I could actually show you how to do that. Cool. Um, well, I'm going to connect you and Droog, or you guys can correspond via messaging and uh, sure. nail out those details. So yeah, that, that'll be awesome, Gary. And then once we get it set up, um, we want to have you back and get some other people from Pimp Rig and PC Apex on the Hangout so we can... Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, ben, anything else? Uh, Everybody check out mountainmods.com. And Ben says he did set up a Twitter at <laughs> – what is your Twitter? Uh, well, Google Mountain Mods Twitter. You'll find it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, <laughs> the That's how frequently I use it. So. Uh, give him some I'll love on it. Twitter. If you don't follow Mountain Mods, just add it to your follow. At, I think it's probably at Mountain Mods, I would imagine. Just check out the website. That's where you're going to get most of the information That's, from. So, <laughs> All right, man. Yeah, there's a Rocky Mountain Homes Mountain, and they're using Mountain Mods for their Twitter handle. Okay. All right. Yeah, ignore Twitter. Just go to Ben's site, everybody. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Drew, anything else? Um, I did want to bring up that I saw something come across uh, thanks to Jesse on our uh, the staff chat. Uh, EVGA is having a slight issue with the 1070s and 1080s. Um, apparently, they didn't put the uh, full number of thermal pads people expected them to in the uh, oh, new shit using the ACX 2.0 cooling. Um, if you go to evga.com slash thermal mod, however, and you owned one of these cards and you've got it registered through them, you can request uh, packs of the thermal pads to be sent to you so you can put them in. And uh, apparently what's been happening is some people have been having their cards, the uh, VRAM has been burning up on them <laughs> under extreme overclock stress. So you, if you own one of these cards, this is something you want to look into. Um, the other thing is something that Bill and I both got bit with that isn't really a, I don't want to say that it's directly related to anything we have or haven't done, but um, my research tells me that over the last several years, at least four or five years, uh, somebody's been figuring out the Skype messaging backend and spamming out a bunch of links to a Baidu website that when you click on the link, it actually goes off to a Russian website that installs a bunch of malware. And the con initial concern was, oh crap, we've got to update our passwords. We get to, you know, do that cycle that usually happens. And um, what you want to watch out for is 
well, there's not really that much that we can do about it, actually. It, it's just you're going to start seeing randomly somebody will send you a spam message that is a baidu.com slash and then a bunch of gibberish. You want to ignore it. Tell your friend that you noticed that they sent this out, but do not click on it at all. Uh, the Russians have been getting really good at getting malware past most of the security that's out there right now. So you just want to keep an eye out on that if you use Skype. Um, you, we didn't necessarily need to update our passwords, uh, but it's always a good idea when it looks like you've been um, hit with something like this. And these days you want to go with long passwords if the company that you're going through, well, or the product that you're using doesn't offer second factor authentication. Um, I updated mine. It was one, two, three. Now it's one, two, three, four. So will that help? About 38 seconds longer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. That was me. It was uh, earlier this week. My spam, my my Skype account, spammed all my connections. This stupid uh, URL, and it was funny because this is well. Actually, it was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> some people that I lost contact with over different things, uh, they reached out to me, and it was some people that I'm like. Wow, it takes spam to kind of reignite those old friendships, doesn't it? You know, <laughs> so, uh, spam your old friends, and yeah. So, apologize about that. Yeah, that's the thing too. Is uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are throwing fingers around saying it's your fault. You know, you got infected. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> no, it's not. It's some clever hacker a few years ago started probing the messaging system and the APIs, and Microsoft is just throwing their hands up in the air saying yeah. it's not our fault. You oh, got man passwords. You know, somebody somewhere just needs to sit down and tighten up the security on the back end. Is what it amounts to. Yeah, because it's just going to get worse. Exactly, exactly. I mean, we just saw Dyne Inc. got nailed last week, uh, and the vector was the friggin' Internet of Things. You know, if you're screwing in these smart light bulbs, they've got to make a connection out to the Internet. If you've got a DVR that downloads a, um, a listing from somewhere, if it shares video up, all of these devices that you're getting, um, the smart cameras that you're installing to increase your security, all that crap goes out on the internet. And if it's being produced, there's a company that is actually suing one of the security writers who revealed their name because it was mostly their product that got involved in that attack last week. But um, I can't remember which company it is, but it they basically hid any ability for the average user to update their username and password from the defaults on these devices. And that means if you know what that username and password is and you're a clever coder, you can blast out onto the internet a series of commands that tell these devices just to do whatever you want to. And they're all Linux based, so it's scripting. It's nothing that's too difficult to do at all. And it is possible on some of these devices if you have access at, you know access for the um telnet software and the patience to do it you can force it to change the stuff but how many of the average purchasers of these items understand what telnet no. is let alone how to use it no dude <laughs> nobody does no it, so yeah, that's uh, my closing thing is you guys want to be safe out there. There's a bunch of hardware burning up. There's a bunch of software trying to tear us down. So uh, why don't you yeah. just relax, though, do what I did yesterday, go on Mod a Pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> that was my big project for the week. So yeah, it yeah. was great talking to you guys. Fantastic to meet you, Ben and Gary. Uh, hope to talk to you both again soon. So uh, you guys Likewise, that was awesome. Very enjoyable hangout today. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Fantastic. Thanks. And uh, so, yeah, um, just get out there. You find that something that's ticking you off and cut it up, paint it up, make it yours, mod something. Would you guys have a good one? <laughs>